Welcome to Guns, Guns, Gear, and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. Today we are going to look at the evolution of the Kalashnikov platform bayonet. Starting from the earliest days to the modern era, we will cover the major changes and a few variations, but this is more a general history. Every nation that ended up with the AK platform may have had their own bayonet production or production that continued beyond the regular issue date for primary Soviet forces. And the very first AKs did not have bayonet lugs, possibly the only oversight in the design of the AK-47 by Mikhail Kalashnikov. But let's get into it. The first AK bayonets were known as 6X2 or 6H2 depending on your Cyrillic translation and were issued starting from 1955 when AKs were first receiving bayonet lugs and were only issued in the proper Soviet Union until 1960. Though the other AK producing nations did not have the exact same start and end dates, this example is Polish in origin, for example. The design is similar to the previous SVT-40 blade bayonet and is a pretty traditional style that was widely used across the world at the time. Not a bad design, they do feel a little bit awkward with the protrusions at the hilt and pommel. It attaches in the traditional method and has a latch release that is pulled down for removal. Though this bayonet variant may have difficulty attaching to modern AKs, as seen here. The second pattern is often called Type 1 on the American market, but was issued as 6X3 or 6H3, and the design had a number of innovations. Here you can see it became a much shorter blade than the previous iteration. The all Bakelite handle and pommel combined with a stainless steel blade reduced the risk of rot and rust. Unlike most previous bayonets, it has no fuller in the blade. They also tried to make it a quasi-multi-tool with several features incorporated into the design. By combining the bayonet with the sheath, it creates some simple wire cutters. Additionally, a rubberized portion on the sheath along with the Bakelite handle are non-conductive, allowing you to cut wires on an electric fence without getting zapped. There were also saw teeth built into the blade, though as I demonstrated in a previous video, these are not super effective as multi-tools, but they are better than nothing. There is also a retainer strap to help you from dropping the blade if using it in combat or adverse conditions, and an easily replaceable belt hanger if it were to be damaged, which is a nice advantage compared to the traditional bayonet setup. Even with these, there are variations in the hangers, as you can see here, the one here is a more traditional style for the AK platform, and this is more of a frog from older style bayonets. There are some experts who can look at their hanger or retaining strap and tell you the country of origin or time period. I can't do that, but there are some people who know their stuff a lot better than I do here. This model was also only made in the Soviet Union for about four or five years until 1964 or five, though production of this type continued in other nations for years Explain why this variation seems to be the most common one you will find on the surplus market. This pattern switched to the more traditional button style release that you see with all further AK bayonets. And now we have the third variation, 6X4 or 6H4, often called the Type 2 on the American surplus market. Now, these handles are usually also referred to as Bakelite, even I have said that in a video before, but they actually aren't. They are a more modern plastic that has some similarities and look like Bakelite, but calling them Bakelite is not technically correct. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. In addition to the new molded plastic handle, they added a metal pommel. As for better or worse, the handle was often used as a hammer by soldiers and that could lead to breakage or splitting of the handle. The start of which you can see here. The metal sheath was also ditched for an all plastic one that kept the same non-conductive quality as the rubber for electric fences. That's one of the ways you can tell this is not Bakelite. Bakelite that thin was not going to be strong enough to work as a sheath. There are several transitional bayonets in this group. Some like the one in the middle here that still has the metal sheath with the new and improved handle while others have the plastic sheath and the old, completely Bakelite style handle. 
I don't have an example of that one. And then you also see a Yugoslavian variant with black plastic instead of the orange color. Other than that, the features are still pretty much the same. You have the saw built in, you have the cut in the blade for wire cutters, the shape of the blade is the same. So the, really the handle and sheath are the only major differences. This was manufactured in the Soviet Union for 20 years until 1985. And finally, we have the current AKM bayonet, the 6X5. Continuing to change to modern plastics, it also has lost its retaining strap instead of having finger grooves to help you hold onto the handle. There are a few variations within this pattern of bayonet as well, with the very early ones being plum instead of black plastic. The early ones also dropped the standard wire cutter setup and had you actually slip the point of the blade through two grooves in the sheath to cut. This eliminated the cutout on the blade, however they quickly reverted back to the tried and true method which are much more common to find. These are for the modern AKs and will fit the 47 or 74 platform. They began producing these in 1986 and reached the current variation by 1988. You can see the shape of the blade change here as well as the cut for the saw blade. So I think the saw is not as thick as the traditional AK bayonet, it might actually be better at cutting wood, or sawing anything for that matter. It definitely feels the most modern amongst the AK bayonets, and feels good in the hand, but I think it loses a little bit of its charm with the black polymer. All in all, other than the initial jump from a standard style, the AK bayonets changes have been incremental without any large leaps forward. Within each of these types, there are numerous variations when it comes to colors, leather, retaining straps, hangers, some skipped the saw teeth altogether. This is just a basic walkthrough of the main features and evolution of this bayonet. Some countries have borrowed from this design, with integral wire cutters being the most obvious feature. It was quite revolutionary for its time, though many would say bayonets are obsolescent if not obsolete now. I think they are an interesting part of firearms history and worth collecting if you get a chance. After all, everything's better with bayonets. What's your favorite AK bayonet variation? Do you have any that you're wanting to buy? Let me know in the comments. Please like the video, share it with others, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thanks for watching.